This is video number one for Access Module 2 in the Microsoft Office 365 book by Shelley and Cashman. We are on page 2-4. First thing we want to do is open the Owners table in Data Sheet View. So if you just double click on it, it automatically opens in Data Sheet View. And then we want to close the Navigation pane, which is this area over here. Just click on the arrow to close it. And we have some new data that we want to enter as shown in figure 2-2A. And I'm getting an error message here. And the error message says that the changes you requested to the table were not successful because it would create a duplicate value in the index primary key relationship and the problem is that i have entered the wrong owner's id number it's supposed to be 04 i typed in 03 and because that is a primary key column one of the rules is that a primary key must be unique and if i have two that are 0-3 then 0-3 uh, is no longer unique so i have to change that to 0-4 and then i'll be good Okay, when you've got all that typed in, it says to close the owner's table. You close the table just by clicking on the X on the tab up here on the top. Let's reopen the navigation pane. And the next thing we want to do is we want to make some additions to the patients table. Double click on patients. Go down to the blank record here, and we're going to start typing in some new items. So it looks like he's changing the numbering scheme here. So all of these start with P, I assume, for patient. And we currently have. A patient named pause that's going to be p10 so we're going to have to make some changes here ranger is going to be p-11 and fluffy is going to be p-12 okay we need to add patient number one and then two through nine Okay, after you've typed all of that in, uh, number nine on page 2-4 says close the patients table. So we're going to click on the X up here to close it. Open the veterinarians table in data sheet view. So veterinarians is one of those that we imported. Double click on that. Close the navigation pane. Open up the cell below Gomez to enter a new veterinarian last name. And it looks like we have two more veterinarians to add. So let's uh, add those. Okay, look over your data, make sure you typed everything in correctly, fix any mistakes if you need to. And then we're going to go to page 2-5. So we want to open our CFETS database. Uh, I'm not sure why they're asking us to do that. It's already open. Click the shutter bar open close button to close the navigation pane that is already closed. Click create on the ribbon to display the create tab. So let's go up here and click on create. We're going to go to the query design. So there's a queries group here. We want query design. Last time we used the wizard. The wizard just asks us questions about what we want. Query design, we have to know a little bit more about creating a query because we're starting from scratch. Let's turn to page 2-6. Ensure the appointments table is selected. So let's close veterinarians here. Reopen our navigation pane. Click on query design. Double click on appointments over here. 
and you should see a box appear with all of the fields for the appointments table. Let's stretch that out a little bit so we can see all of the field names. And uh, it says click close to remove the dialog box from the screen. I already did that. Now let's go down to the bottom of page 2-6. We're going to add some fields to the design grid. Double click the veterinarian field. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select the fields that we want to see as a result of this query. So I want to see the name of the veterinarian. When I double click on it, it appears down here. Double click the appointment date field. It'll appear down here. Add the appointment time. Double click. Add the patient ID. Add the treatment number. And the owner fields. So now we should match what's at the top of page 2 7. So when we run our query, these are the fields that are going to be retrieved by the query. Now let's flip over to page 2 8. Click the criteria row for the veterinarian field to produce an insertion point. So down here we've got a criteria row. Click on that. And we're going to type G01. That's the number 0, not the letter O. And now we're going to run the query. So what's going on here is we are saying retrieve these fields and go to the appointments table and find the one that has G01 as the veterinarian name and retrieve that if we get a match. So all of the appointments for that veterinarian should be retrieved. So let's go ahead and click on the run button up here. And apparently we have one appointment scheduled for that veterinarian. If there had been more than one, it would have retrieved all of them. So now we're at the bottom of page 2-8. We're going to click the Save button. We need to give the query a name. We're going to call this M02Q01. Click on OK. That's not really the best name for a query, though. A query should describe what the data is that they're retrieving. I guess that kind of does a little bit. It's got G01 in there. But you might want to do something a little bit more descriptive for that. Okay, now we're going to flip over to page 2-10, and we're going to use a wildcard. So we want to open the owner's query in design view. So we've already got an owner's query we created down here. Um, Right-click on that. Choose uh, design view. If you choose open, it runs the query. So we're in design view here. We can see what the query is. We created this with the wizard, but we can look at it in query design view. And we see that these are the fields that we're going to retrieve from the owner's table. And there's no criteria here. So if we run this, we'll just get all of the owners listed. Let's go ahead and try that. Let's go ahead and run it. We get all of the owners. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, let's go back to design view over here. And we're going to go to the owner state column and we're going to look for U star. Okay. What that means is that the first letter has to be U, but what follows it can be anything. So star is called a wild card because it'll match any character. So the only thing we got out there, I think, is UT for Utah. But if we had U and something else, I think that's the only state that starts with the letter U. But if we had U followed by something else, that would also be retrieved. Let's go ahead and run the query. You always run it by clicking on the exclamation mark up here. And if we look over here, the owner state is UT for every single one of those. Let's go back to design view. And it says, notice this got changed, but that's okay. Change the uppercase U to a lowercase U and then run the query again and see what happens. See if the case of the letters makes a difference as far as access is concerned. And it does not. So when comparing text in Access, it is not case sensitive. So that's good to know. Let's go back to Design View. Let's go to our File tab. We want to save this query. Do Save As. We're not saving the whole database. We're just saving an object within it. So everything that you create, whether it's a query or a form or a report, is considered an object in the database. And what we want to do is we want to click on the Save As button. For the name of the query, we're going to type M02Q02. Now flip over to page 
click OK. And the last thing it says to do on the middle of page 2-12 is to close the query. So let's go ahead and close it. We should probably close the other one too. I don't know if I missed that or not. And uh, that's a good place to stop this video.